I can put you guys on YouTube. The Madison State Patrol is in there. All right. <laughs> See the Madison State State Patrol dragging the. Uh, what they did was they just loaded them up on buses. The ones. That <laughs> Tell me your first name while you're here. Mike Kelly. And why are you here? Because I know what war is. Yes, you do. So tell me, where did you serve? Vietnam, 1968. Okay. Anything more to say? I wouldn't wish it on anyone. Because Wait I, a minute. I agree with all this stuff. These are my okay. friends. What's your name again? Cindy. Cindy. Yes. All right. And what's your name? My name's Anne. Anne. Yeah. And, and why are you here? Well, I'm here because I... I worried a lot about the people of Iraq and Afghanistan and I decided to do something. Okay. I was worried about, you know, the health of the moms and the children and um, I just don't think that we ought to be continuing this. And so I wanted to come out and just make a stand. Alright. So is, you see peace as like an advertisement campaign? Do I see peace as an advertisement campaign? Yeah. Um, perhaps um, advertisement in the sense that you've got to get out the message to people yeah. that this is a worthwhile um, thing to put your energy into and how you vote and what kind of things you advocate. Yeah, I would say. Okay. Just make it high profile. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Welcome to Walmart. <laughs> Badge on. Say, can you bring him home? Can you tell me your first name and why you're here? Myron Buckles. I've been manning a corner since 2000. And, well, five, I guess, at our Peace Corners up in Chippewa, and protesting the war since 2002. It's been a long war. Making any headway? If it wasn't for us, most of the people going by here wouldn't even know what was going on. That's true. And so we're doing a service. I don't know about headway, but we're doing a service. Good. Protest war. Uh, little chubby kid goes by and starts yelling, war is good. In fact, I just had a conversation with some of my students who brought it up about killing Osama bin Laden. And I said, yeah, last spring when that happened, we had students running around cheering. And I counseled a couple of students I know. I said, don't be so quick to cheer death. Death is not something that should be cheered. You can recognize it, you can document it. I don't think it should be cheered. And then I said, and you remember, the media was calling SEAL Team 6 superheroes. And those superheroes were killed by a $100 weapon, probably purchased from some arms dealer, and suddenly the superheroes are all dead. And uh, so, you know, the other side is not shooting death. You know, well, we've Bomber. Well, he just flashed you a little piece. Yeah, he did. So I think, oh, that's what he's saying. Maybe he is positive. Well, he did. who knows? But the logic sometimes is interesting. Yeah. Or the lack of it. I'm here. <laughs> There's a, a certain percentage. <laughs> probably over a half of the people who go past us on a stand like this that I refer to as straight aheaders. That they know we're here, but you see them and they just focus straight ahead because they're afraid to look at us. Because to look at us, you have to acknowledge our presence. There are people who look at you and you know they want to flip you off, but they're too polite. And there are people who do flip you off or give you crap, but you know, a real small percentage. We noticed that around 2007, it dropped off considerably where we were getting flipped off, you know, five, 10 times an hour to where we could stand for an hour and not get even one rude comment. Occasionally, now we get something, but it's very rare. So you are, so you are sinking into the social fabric a little bit. Uh, yeah, well, we, that was a very unofficial poll, but we all called it somewhere around the spring of 2007. The uh, thumbs down and the, uh, you know, the, our unofficial poll, the worm turn. That's what that was. Okay. And so now, like I said, we don't. But we still have the straight ahead. It's the people that, you know, they you can see them. And they just grip that wheel and then it's straight ahead. Because they don't want to have to confront reality. Because that's part of our problem. Is that people are in a little cocoon. There's one-tenth of a, basically one percent of people that have uh, loved ones in harm's way. 
and the rest of people simply are not connected to this war in any way, shape, or form. Until they start to see it hit their pocket. You know, if the, the 10 billion a month is starting to hurt, now all of a sudden it's like, oh, well, maybe we should do something. But, uh, see this guy in the red pickup over here? He wants to say something. He's shaking his head. He's looking at it. He's, 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 I, don't, he, I don't think he's a positive one. Spent a trillion, killed a billion. We got one guy. Bring him home. And I love to wear my army shirt at this thing. Just because. I'm not army myself, my daughter is. But it tends to make people uh, who want to say something shut up when they see it. It's yeah. like any Vietnam vet, you know, any, any uh, military family shirt. Uh, that usually lessens the vitriol, you know, put it that way. Because uh, they just want to label us as crazy liberals. Well, Mike over here is a Vietnam vet. Yes. Yeah, and the hat uh, speaks volumes. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for taking a stand. We're Mike. slowing down traffic. Hey, she was all <laughs> <laughs> Did I try to make the light? <laughs> Yeah, then they'd look. Yeah, they would. Or we'd say, grand opening, pawn shop, here. <laughs> well, I say, we spent a trillion, killed a million, got one guy. Is it worth it? Ten billion a month. So how long have you been coming down here, Steve? Well, this is, we're, you know what? Next month is three years in a row that we've been out here on just the third Friday of each month. But I've been standing for well over 11 years trying to end this war. One of these days, it's going to take. Doesn't take much. It doesn't <laughs> take much. You got it. You got it. Tell me your first name and why you're here. To me, I'm here because I think all citizens are responsible for their government and what we do, and I don't like what ours is doing. Okay. Why do you, why do you think this is going to help? I think it shows other people that there's support for their views. Okay. It's a visible sign. All right. What about you? Tell me your first name and why you're here. My name's Joel. I'm here because my son can't be. Oh, okay. Where is he? He's in Afghanistan. Uh, that's what I thought. So, uh, I'm here to uh, kind of pick up for him, get him back on this side of the ocean, where he should be. So, how long have you folks been doing this? How long have I been doing this? Uh, about 15 minutes. <laughs> 15 minutes? Have you done it before? Uh, previous, yeah, yeah. previous years, previous yeah, months. I've, I've been out a few times, not as often as I like to. Okay. Yeah. All right. I get out and stand in front of the world. And do what I can. That's what everybody seems to be doing. Yeah. No, it doesn't. Sometimes, you know, like when it's 20 below zero and we're standing out here or whatever, I think about those soldiers that, you know, they're in, they're in these Humvees or whatever and it's 120 degrees in the shade. And I go, it's a piece of cake. I got one hour. Right. They got one year. And then they're back again after another year. And again. And again. And again, there's guys that have done eight tours in Afghanistan and Iraq combined. And we think that that's the right thing to do. You got uh, any kids over there right now? No, my son came back in 2004, and thank God he didn't. Have, he only had to do one tour. They had to, they had to backdoor draft him though to make him go. Oh, he was. He was okay. stop loss. Okay. So was he in Iraq or? Yeah, he was in Tikrit, Iraq, the same same town where. Saddam Hussein was born. You never got to meet the guy, though. Hmm. 
Not that he wanted to. <laughs> While you're here, I'm Damien O'Brien and I'm finishing my last crust of Great Harvest Country Crunch bread and I'm here to digest it and to uh, stand with some of my fellow citizens and bring awareness to people that uh, this war is still going on. Many people are still dying, including American soldiers. In Afghanistan, as in dozens of other places around the world, it's uh, squandering uh, our moral credibility, our, our treasury, our morale, and uh, it's, a, it's a tragic mistake. And it goes on and on and on, and until the citizens of the country join hands in large numbers and demand an end to it, uh, people are going to continue to profit off of it and ignore, you know, the wishes of the about three quarters of the people driving by here agree with us. They want to bring the troops home. Uh, if they're going to spend a, a trillion dollars, they'd rather spend it, pay those soldiers to come back over here and build things rather than be over there destroying things and rebuilding them or killing people. And um, it's time to do that. And it has been time to do that for decades. So that's why I'm here. Well, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> My name is Lou, and I am here because I think that America should not be starting all these wars, but rather should be focusing on using diplomacy, international cooperation, and development. Very good. Very good. So, tell me your first name and why Bloody you're here. Mary. Buddy Mary? Okay. That'll work. <laughs> Can I put you on YouTube? Do I what? Can I put you on YouTube? Who? On YouTube. Oh, oh, oh. You can go right ahead and put me on YouTube. <laughs> okay, okay. So why are you here? I'm here because I believe war is wrong. And we run to war before we do anything else to solve our problems. I think as a nation, we should grow up. That's kind of a kiddish thing to do. So war is like the most unimaginative solution? I think it is. <laughs> it's a pretty basic response. Someone does something to you, you retaliate. I think a mature country would be thoughtful and and do something that wouldn't harm the environment and other people and our own populations. For some people that seems like a lot to ask, is it? <laughs> you're you're wow, well, you're brave man! Yeah, you bet! Come on, stand here! You go! You go! Yeah, I agree! I agree! We're not for Obama! That's why we want you to stand with us! YouTube, you'll see your talk out there. YouTube. Get there, you'll find it. And why you're here? I'm Mark. And why am I here? Yeah. Because I believe it's important to stand for peace, and not just during war, but all the time. I'm, I believe it's vital to do it in both in standing against war and in the work we do for peace. So I do both. I do radio programs. Uh, this radio program I do weekly called Spirit in Action. And particularly I try and lift up the lives of those doing work for peace, justice, care for the environment, etc. Where can that be found? You go to my website, northernspiritradio.org.
And okay. you can find all my archives in the past six years. Do you do a streaming live show or a podcast? I do a podcast. It's broadcast at 13 different stations nationwide. Okay. They put it in their schedule where it fits for them. Okay. Do they broadcast it here on Wise Radio? Or it's anything? on Wise Radio. That's my home station. Okay. Okay. Well, got anything more you want to say? He's on, I haven't been long. So. <laughs> <laughs> what I want to say is, to really do peace well, we have to do it together. It can't be just individuals, although that work is important too. And so what we need to do is build deeper and better communities who end up living and working for peace. Right. Peace in the home, huh? Peace in people's homes? Peace in people's homes. There's a story there, a statement that was passed on to me by a woman who got it from a, a Buddhist monk in Thailand. Mm -hmm. And she said that he said, a peaceful heart makes for a peaceful man, peaceful man for a peaceful family, peaceful family for a peaceful village, and a peaceful village for a peaceful nation peaceful nation for a peaceful world. So it starts in the heart of each one of us. And we send it out as ripples across the world. Very good. Thank you.